Before we get into the video, I just want to give you guys a quick reminder that my desk mat sales end January 17th. It's limited edition, so this is the only time you'll ever be able to get one. Just head to the link on the screen. Also, in partnership with Epic Desk, we're giving away 10 of their original designs. Just hop in my Discord and enter the giveaway. The Yeti is a snowball base for four to six people. A snowball base in general focuses on being easy to build, should have a great starter unit that can be easily expanded. It needs to be highly defendable in an online raid. It'll generally use honeycomb instead of inner peaks to shrink the size and cost of the base. And last, it doesn't require you to expand the base to its final state before logging off. And with all of that said, the Yeti is my take on a four to six man snowball base with heavy inspiration from builds by Walker V2. An amazing builder and somebody I would consider a good friend of mine. We'll start off our tour, like most, with the Mini Satori and Mr. Man Quick Disconnectable External TC. Placing a twig roof right here will disconnect the TC so you can replace your main one in the event it gets raided. Coming into our gatehouse, we can see we have amazing angles into our compound to defend from. Inside our front airlock, we'll see a couple of drop boxes and a second story entrance. This mobility module is symmetrical on the other side and goes all the way up to the roof. We can come in and see some storage on this floor as well as a battery here, and then the mobility unit on the other side. Right here is our drop down into our starter core. As you can see, it's super spacious, has all of the utility items and box storage you would need, and we actually seal off the original starter airlock with a vending machine. If we come back up, we can go to our third floor, and the first thing we see is our early shooting floor. This is built right off of the wide gaps that the full shooting floor is built off of and gives you 360 degree compound coverage from one triangle on either side. We also have more storage on this floor, or you could use it for utility items. And you can see on either side, we have these retakes for every single floor on both sides of the base. This helps if you're getting raided, so you can hop in these and retake the floor above where you're at. Coming up another floor, we have more storage and utility items. And on our next jump up, you can see that we have retakes into our main shooting floor. So if somebody breaches it, we can defend it. Also on this floor, we have bedrooms and turret coverage, as well as some batteries that are high up and tucked away. Coming out into our wide gap shooting floor, you can see we have basically infinite angles into our compound and out of our compound. If we come over here, we also have really high visibility breach peaks and some roof defenses. Coming up one more floor, we have more peaks directly onto the roof for a total of 12. And as you can see, there's plenty of space up here to roleplay, who knows. 
We also have some vending machine bunkers for drone accessible shop. These will make sure to keep your loot safe. We can actually start by creating only half of the starter unit just to save some cost and secure your build location. Put down this footprint, locate this triangle, and enclose a TC in it. If you place it like this, it'll make it easy to upgrade the foundation, ceiling, and walls later on. Make sure when you attach the ceiling tile, it's on the outside socket, so the lines should look like this. I actually prefer to use a single door frame here because I end up with a bunch of single armored doors later on in wipe. You can close the starter unit and leave a double door frame here. Then we'll put a ceiling on the whole thing. On the left side, we can start building out a loot room. And you can leave the square here, but for mobility, I prefer to place a triangle here instead. Just make sure you delete the twig build up on the outside. The right side you can leave open for utility items and bags for now. As soon as possible you should expand out and mirror what you've done on the other side and then connect them with these triangles. Fall in the rest and put a ceiling on it. Just don't put a triangle here because this will be how we get to our next floor. Set up your airlock just like this so you can defend it if somebody goes deep and put a standard jump up roof exit on it. Just like that, we've expanded out into the full size starter. These triangles are actually super useful for furnaces and they'll be functional honeycomb. So if we come to the outside, we can make this twig build up and yes, we have to do it from the outside. Place this frame through the wall. It should look just like this, but don't upgrade it yet. We'll do the same on the other side. The triangle splash bug is the reason you have to attach them from the outside and not the inside. This is gonna take some trial and error, but if you place these just perfectly, you can fit all three furnaces inside, upgrade it to sheet metal, and then put a window frame in front of it so then somebody can't go through it if they blow in through the outside. And just like that, we have some truly functional honeycomb. We can then put down our workbench, research table, repair bench, or any other utility items you want out in this space. And there we go. Our starter unit is just about done. If we come in the front airlock here, we can just fill out this loot room however we like. This is totally up to you. And then you can throw some more double door frames on here and throw double doors or garage doors on depending on what you have. I'm going to start the expansion process by actually just upgrading everything to its final grade. So just follow what I do here and just remember you can do this whenever you get the materials. Starting at these side triangles, we can upgrade the foundation to sheet and the wall itself to HQM. To the right of that, we can upgrade everything to HQM until we get to the same triangle on the other side. Here we'll do the same thing. And then we can upgrade everything to sheet metal beyond that. If we come back inside the base, we can also upgrade a few things in here. We can get rid of these double doors and place down some garage doors. You might have to replace a box or two. Then we'll add some more double door frames and just garage door spam on all of them. You don't have to upgrade these, but I'm just gonna do it. We can also upgrade our functional honeycomb here. 
and then the back of the TC compartment. Stepping outside, I'm going to turn symmetry on so everything I do on this side of the base is mirrored on the other side. We can come back to this triangle and start creating our new airlock. On either of these triangles, we'll just make sheet metal honeycomb. We can then create a jump up on this side and a little shelf on this side to hold our drop boxes. We can seal off everything except for the triangle where the jump up is. And this is how it should look. Coming over here, we can finish up our honeycomb. We'll also seal the tops of these. And yes, this means on the other side as well, which means that you're going to put honeycomb directly over your starter airlock. Now coming up, we can begin to wall in the entire floor. And then right next to this jump up, we'll create another half height shelf and we'll place a single door frame on it. Placing full walls and then a triangle right here will seal the top but allow us to continue expanding later. Over here, we'll continue our mobility module and then put a ceiling on everything else. Seal up an entrance at the top and then we'll have our new roof exit. These sheet metal doors will eventually be our retakes for the next floor, but for now they actually work as roof defenses to protect your minicopter or a top-down raid. We can build out our loot rooms on this floor, and these back walls are just honeycomb. You can actually HQM them for three stories to get to that 150 HQM upkeep figure that was shown in the beginning of the video. After we lay out these loot rooms, we can just garage door spam on all the sockets. Also coming back to our front airlocks, feel free to add another garage door here as well. Lay out these loot rooms however you like. I'm just doing a very simple six box approach because it's easy and it doesn't require you to min max things with barbecues and small boxes. If you play in a group like I do, we prefer the accessibility of large boxes versus the efficiency of smalls. You can also put turrets in these locations when you acquire them. And already at this first expansion, you could log off right now if you have garage doors down and you have a pretty tanky base, but we're gonna keep going. To start building your external TCs, come off of both of your airlocks with three squares. Delete the first two and then create triangles right here and then follow this build up. I like to upgrade these to wood just for mobility reasons. Then we can put our gatehouse right here and create the following build out. When we get to this point, we'll come to where the external will live and use two half walls here, not a full wall. Otherwise the disconnect method won't work. We can then secure the TC with a window and a garage door, or use a double sheet door if you don't have one yet. Putting these frames here, we can connect the wide gaps to the gatehouse, and then we'll connect the gatehouse to the external TC. Then we can continue by building out our gatehouse the same way as we did in the shadow. Thank you. 
place some twig stairs here to get up to the top and then continue building. Use twig to build out so you can easily place down these barricades. Fill out the deployables however you like. You don't need drop boxes here, but I like to have them. We can then place these frames down on these foundations so they don't decay. They're not actually connected if these frames aren't touching them. To build out the other two externals, follow this build out. Right here we want to use a raised triangle foundation and then we'll delete the rest of what we made and create another raised triangle foundation next to it. Place a lowered triangle and then a square off of it on either side. Then to build our gatehouse, just follow this build out. And the external will look exactly the same as the other one. Then just the same as the other one, we'll connect the gatehouse to the external just like this. And we'll connect the wide gap to the gatehouse. This way is a little bit different because we have raised foundations, so just follow what I'm doing here by adding a half wall and these frames. Then we'll just finish up the gatehouse just how we did the other one, except there won't be Dropbox storage in this one. And again, once we get over to here, these foundations aren't technically connected until we put these frames on them. Placing down our compound is pretty straightforward. Instead of placing the walls directly straight, we're going to bow them out slightly and then follow kind of what I'm doing here. I don't have an exact scientific build out method for this, but if you follow how I do it in the video, it seems to work out just fine. gives us plenty of space to put a bunch of large furnaces, oil refineries, and anything else you might want in your compound. So you've probably drawn a bit of attention to yourself with a compound and externals, so let's get the shooting floor up. Going up just one more frame on either of these spots, and then coming up our mobility chute, we can start building out these frames and floor tiles. Placing a double door frame here with the double door facing out will seal the gaps and then we can go ahead and wall in this mobility chute. Just remember these jump ups don't have to be sheet metal. We'll then go ahead and finish walling in the rest of this floor and building up our retakes. Just remember the inner walls of this honeycomb can be HQM if you choose. You can go ahead and build out these loot rooms exactly the same as the previous floor. 
Then we'll put a roof on it and build our roof access. This one's going to be a little different because we'll only use a half wall on this side. I like to leave these squares open on one floor so I can fit some utility items like mixing tables. Then as per usual at this point, we will garage door spam. Start our expansion of this floor, we will come to the mobility module and mirror this half wall on the other side. Then we'll build a window frame up on either and place a wall in between them. This is going to allow us to have our retakes into the main shooting floor. Then like normal, we will enclose all of this honeycomb in. and repeat the same build out internally as each floor. This retake will be a little different because the wall on the left will be a half wall. Then we'll come up to the top and seal everything up. This double door is going to be what takes us out into our shooting floor. We can place horizontal embrasures into these windows as well, and then, you guessed it, garage door spam. If you're worried about the gear cost, you can always just prioritize certain garage doors. Uh, if you put one over each loot room, and then put the one in the middle to split them up, that can definitely make it cheaper. Then feel free to build out these loot rooms however you like. At this point, I'm also going back and upgrading a few of the other loot rooms to HQM in the back. You don't really need it here in this drop-down chute, it can just stay sheet metal. Bedrooms are probably the most important part about an online raid defense. They allow you to respawn and re-kit quickly. We'll start off by not filling out the entire honeycomb, just the inside walls here, and then we'll place a roof on the whole thing. You'll now see why we use the half walls, because we're going to use these as peaks to the roof. This is actually our roof exit, so we can go ahead and just build this out quick. Coming back inside, we can build it out with a slightly different internal layout. Mm, garage doors. Starting at this section, we'll use a single door frame to put a locker behind. This makes it more accessible than a window because you don't need a hammer. We'll then section these off and put another locker right here. Then in the last triangle, I like to put a battery because it's high and tucked away. This one can go behind a window frame because it won't be accessed often. Then we'll place our beds down. I'm gonna place six like this. And then you know the drill, get those garage doors on there. We also have nice little pods right here for turrets, which are great if somebody decides to try to top down you. 
I also like to upgrade the roof above the battery to HQM, again in case somebody tries to top down you. Building up our shooting floor is pretty straightforward. We just want to bring all of these frames up to the same height. I'm going to be using symmetry here to just make it go a little quicker. Bring them all up to the same height as this double door and where the honeycomb ends. These ones will actually be a half height lower and that's why the foundations are raised. Then we can place our floors just like this. Once we come into the breach peak, we can place low walls here and windows on the back side. We'll stack these two high and then add some floors. A single door and a window will make up our roof defenses. On these floating squares, we'll put two double door frames and put double doors to cover the side gap so you're a little bit less exposed in your shooting floor. Then we can put a roof on it by doing this. You'll need these frames here to finish the roof though. And then coming to the front side, we can again build up to the same height. And the single triangle will go right off to the main base, and then these triangles go off the wide gaps. Build up the rest of the frames and place floors off of them. Once we put window frames and embrasures off of it, all we have left to do is put a ceiling on it. This will be off of the main base, just so then you're a little bit less exposed. We'll then place square roofs all the way along the outside of the base, except once we get to the raised foundations. At this point, we'll go inside and place triangle ones facing inward. This will create a nice little turret pod, and it looks sick, so fuck it. Just like that, our shooting floor is wrapped up, and we can come to the roof and start putting down our windmills. Now, fun fact, you can actually get rid of these if you center it perfectly on the windmill tower. This can actually be applied right here where we don't have the stability to place these floor tiles. So we can create a temporary twig buildup to place them and then get rid of all the twig buildup. Fancy, huh? Now the last thing that we have to do up here is create our vending machine bunker drone shops. If you line it up just how I do on here, it should work, but this is super finicky. If you've never done it before, make sure you practice on a build server, otherwise you could have a bad day. With all of that said, I appreciate everybody who sticks around to the end of these videos. I hope you really enjoy this build and get a bunch of use out of it in the real world, and I'll see you guys in the next one.